Good morning. Where is the God of Elijah? Hmm? Where is the God of Elijah? Get your authorized version of the scriptures and turn in your authorized version of the scriptures to 2 Kings chapter 2. 2 Kings chapter 2. <clears throat> This is telling us of Elijah and Elisha. Elisha is the prophet who came after Elijah. Elisha, of course, goes up in a whirlwind. We're going to see that. But this is the prophet that has been anointed in the room of Elijah. Okay, Elisha. Backstory, a little of the backstory for that. 2 Kings chapter 2, verses 9 on to verse 15. You are expected to follow along, and I will speak to you as if you are. Okay? Okay. And it came to pass... Oh, very, very quickly, before we begin this, um, almost in virtually every verse within 2 Kings chapter 2, Almost every single one, almost every single time, and is the beginning of a verse in uh, 2 Kings chapter 2, almost. For example, verse 22, um, there's not an and, but virtually every single verse in um, 2 Kings chapter 2 begins with and, except for this one right here that I see. Little interesting rabbit trail for you, but nevertheless. And it came to pass when they were gone over that Elijah said unto Elisha, Ask what I shall do for thee before I be taken away from thee. And Elisha said, I pray thee, let a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. And he said, Thou hast asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, if thou see me when I am taken from thee, it shall be so unto thee. But if not, it shall not be so. Because remember, the Jews require a sign. And it came to pass, as they still went on and talked, that, behold, there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire, and parted them both asunder. And Elisha, went up by a whirlwind into heaven. And Elisha saw it. And he cried, My father, my father, the chariot of Israel and the horsemen thereof. And he saw him no more and took hold of his own clothes and rent them in two pieces. He took up also the mantle of Elisha that fell from him and went back and stood by the bank of Jordan. And he took the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and smote the waters and said, Where is the Lord God of Elijah? And when he also had smitten the waters, they parted hither and thither, and Elisha went over. And when the sons of the prophets were, which were to view at Jericho saw him, they said, The spirit of Elijah doth rest on Elisha. And they came to meet him and bowed themselves to the ground before him. We're looking at specifically verse 14 in this. There is a lot that we can go off. On in this, but where is the Lord God of Elisha? Where is God? Now, a lot of these people who call themselves charismatic or Pentecostals, 
one and the same, pretty much. They're Catholics. They like to tell you things that the sign gifts that were for the Jews are in operation today. Okay, today we um, we live by faith, not by sight. Okay, we don't you know we don't need signs and wonders today. Okay, the Jews they require a sign. All right, and the Charismatics Pentecostals like to make reference that the latter rain is for us today and that all these sign gifts and they give all these bogus prophecies and whatnot. And that makes a lot of the Church of the Living God look bad, which is their purpose. The fake, the false out there is out there to make you who are lost think that that which is truly of the church of the living God is foolish. And all the while, how many say, you know, say things like this? <laughs> Where is the Lord God of Elijah? Where is God? Right? Where is God? Go to Ecclesiastes chapter 8. Ecclesiastes chapter 8. Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verses 11, on to verse 13. Because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily, therefore the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. Though a sinner do evil an hundred times, and his days be prolonged, yet surely I know that it shall be well with them that fear God, which fear before him. But it shall not be well with the wicked, neither shall he prolong his days, which are as a shadow, because he feareth not before God. Think about these people who call themselves atheists. Okay? You need proof. You need to see proof, right? And even if, uh, um, with the majority of these atheists, I truly believe if the Lord Jesus Christ himself were to appear in front of these people, that wouldn't be enough for them. I truly believe that. And they say things, well, where is your God? If your God is such a loving God, why is there so much evil going on in the world? Hmm? Where is this God of yours that brought the children of Israel out of Egypt? Hmm? Where is this God of yours that rose Jesus Christ from the dead? Hmm? There's no judgment. There's nothing. I mean, these, these evil people are getting away with all kinds of things, right? And then how many of these people who have that mentality decide to, well, what's good for the goose is also good for the gander, right? Hey, if they're doing it, why can't I do it? Huh? If these guys are getting away with it, why can't I? Yeah. Yeah. Go to Ezekiel. Go to Ezekiel chapter 12. Ezekiel chapter 12. We will be reading verses 21 on to verse 28. Ezekiel chapter 12, verses 21 on to verse 28. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, what is that proverb that ye have in the land of Israel, saying, The days are prolonged, and every vision faileth? Tell them, therefore, thus saith the Lord God, I will make this proverb to cease. And they shall no more use it as a proverb in Israel. But say unto them, The days are at hand. The days are at hand. And the effect of every vision. Now note that. Look at verse 22. The days are prolonged and every vis vision faileth. Verse 23. 
But say unto them, The days are at hand, and the effect of every vision. For there shall be no more any vain vision nor flattering divination within the house of Israel. For I am the Lord, I will speak, and the word that I shall speak shall come to pass. It shall be no more prolonged. For in your days, O rebellious house, will I say the word, and will perform it, Seth, the Lord God. Hold your place here. Isaiah 55. Isaiah 55, verse 11. <clears throat> oh, let's, let's read verses 8 on to verse 11 in Isaiah 55. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. How many people like to bring God down to their level and imagine him as if he were one of us? And God was a man. Absolutely. Absolutely. But see, he never sinned because God cannot sin you know Jesus Christ is come in the flesh great is the mystery of godliness God was manifest in the flesh God who never sinned who could not sin okay and how many like to think of him our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. As though he thinks as one of us. Our finite minds, our finite understanding. His ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. <clears throat> for as the rain cometh down and the snow from heaven and returneth not thither but watereth the earth and maketh it bring forth in bud that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth it shall not return unto me void but it shall accomplish that which I please and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I send it Back to uh, Ezekiel chapter 12. Let's reread verse 25 and close this chapter out. For I am the Lord, I will speak, and the word that I shall speak shall come to pass. It shall be no more prolonged. For in your days, O rebellious house, will I say the word and will perform it, saith the Lord God. Again, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, Behold, they of the house of Israel say, The vision that he seeth is for many days to come. And he prophesieth of times that are far off. Therefore say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, There shall none of my words be prolonged any more, but the word which I have spoken shall be done. Seth, the Lord God. Hmm. You need proof, right? Where is this loving God of yours, right? Oh, don't worry. One day, one day soon. <laughs> when? We don't know. But one day. Or sooner rather than later. You're going to have all the proof that you're going to be able to choke down. But there again, like I said, I do truly believe that there are those out there, if the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father himself, were to do one of these, hi, in front of one of these people who call themselves an atheist, they still wouldn't. It would affect them hardly at all.
Why is that? Hmm? Why is that? Go to Isaiah chapter 33. Isaiah chapter 33. Verses 30 on to verse 33. Familiar verses. Also thou son of man, the children of thy people still are talking against thee by the walls and in the doors of the houses, and speak one to another, every one to his brother, saying, Come, I pray you, and hear what is the word that cometh forth from the Lord. And they come unto thee as the people cometh, and they sit before thee as my people, and they hear thy words, but they will not do them. For, which, for with their mouth they shew much love. But their heart goeth after their covetousness. And lo, thou art unto them as a very lovely song. Of one that hath a pleasant voice. <clears throat> and can play well on an instrument. For they hear thy words. But they do them not. And when this cometh to pass, lo, it will come. Then shall they know that a prophet hath been among them. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. Like I told you, one day, those who are saved, born again, converted of the Church of the Living God, inaccurately referred to as Christians. Look, oh, by the way, look around you, okay? There are a lot of people who ascribe to themselves as being Christian. There's a difference between Christian in the Church of the Living God, by the way, there's a big difference. Okay? But there's going to come a time when the Church of the Living God, the body of Christ, is going to be redeemed. Okay? There have been so many people warning all of you of this. You have been thoroughly, thoroughly war uh, warned of this. <clears throat> but you still need proof, don't you? <laughs> are, are you blind? I think the answer to that for a lot of you is yes, you are blind. Willfully. Aren't you? Luke chapter 12. Luke chapter 12. Luke chapter 12. <clears throat> Verses 42 on to verse 59. The close of the chapter. Luke 12. Verses 42 on to verse 49. And the Lord said, Who then is that faithful and wise steward, whom his Lord shall make ruler over his household, to give them their portion of meat in due season? Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. What is the Lord going to find you doing when he says, Come up hither? Hmm? What are you going to be doing? Hmm. Of a truth I say unto you, that he will make him ruler over all that he hath. <clears throat> but, and if thy servant say in his heart, My Lord delayeth his coming, and shall begin to beat the men servants and maidens, and to eat and drink, and to be drunken. I mean, well, I, I still got time. I still got time. 
I'm going to go out there and live a little bit. <laughs> live, so-called. Yeah. You're going to go out there and live a little bit. You're going to go try all these things, just like Solomon did in the book of Ecclesiastes. He gave himself over to, to wine. He gave himself, he withheld nothing from himself. He beheld madness and folly. And behold, all is vanity and vexation of spirit. He said of laughter, it is mad. And of mirth, what doeth it? <laughs> but, and if that servant say in his heart, my Lord delayeth his coming, and shall begin to beat the men servants and maidens, and to eat and drink and to be drunken, the Lord of that servant will come in a day when he looketh not for him. And at an hour when he is not aware, and will cut him in sunder, and will appoint him his portion with the unbelievers. Now, this is before the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is still doctrinally under the law in the Old Testament. Okay? Yes, this is in the collection of books referred to as the New Testament, but the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ had not yet happened. So that means it was still the dispensation of the law, okay? Still within the Old Testament. We're looking at this for our instruction in righteousness, okay? To live foolishly as if there is no God, you got to get out there and get some of that. But what does this verse say? The Lord of that servant will come in a day when he looketh not for him, and at an hour when he is not aware, and will cut him in sunder, and will appoint him his portion with the unbelievers. What is the Lord going to catch you doing, brother, sister? Hi. <laughs> what is he going to catch you doing? What is he going to catch you looking at? What is he going to catch you listening to? And whose company is he going to catch you in? Hmm? Hmm? And you, lost people, you devils, what are you going to do when the church of the living God is taken out and you're left here? What are you going to do? The realization is going to hit you. Then you better conform to Mystery Babylon, right? Because that's who a majority of you are working for anyway. Hmm. See, once the redemption of the purchased possession happens, dear friends, this age, this dispensation, it's over. It's over. To be saved during the time of Jacob's trouble is going to be very, very difficult. Now. Now is the time. But so many of you won't. You need proof. By the time the Lord gives you your proof, it'll be too late for you. Things don't change, right? Except they get worse. But no, some of you crazy atheists out there who believe in what Darwin taught, things are getting better, huh? <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, you poor fools. You poor fools. Verse 47. And that servant which knew his Lord's will and prepared not himself. Neither did according to his will shall be beaten with many stripes. You know how James talks about being not, be not many masters? You know, for there is one master. 
even our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Okay? To much, to whom much is given, much is required. You're better off not knowing than knowing and not conforming unto the scriptures. See, that's why there are so many of you devils out there who uh, know the truth, but yet you've, well, you've already made your decision. Okay? You're serving the devil. Okay? It's going to be far worse for you than you could even possibly imagine. Because you're deceived. You're deceived. And willfully and joyfully so for some of you. And it says here, and the servant, and that servant which knew his Lord's will, and prepared not himself, neither did according to his will, shall be beaten with many stripes. But he that knew not, and did commit things worthy of stripes, shall be beaten with few stripes. Both are going to be beaten with stripes. Okay? For our instruction in righteousness, you are of the church of the living God, and you're living as a lost devil, and the Lord hadn't killed you. And you know better? At the judgment seat of Christ. It's going to be rough. But then again right here. But he that knew not. And did commit things worthy of stripes. Shall be beaten with few stripes. Still worthy of condemnation and damnation. This one here who knew not. And that knowing not. Is that because of an ignorance. Uh, meaning that no one has told him. The Lord hasn't said anything. The Lord hasn't sent an ambassador. Or is it something willful. For unto whomsoever much is given. Of him shall be much required. And to whom men have committed much. Of him they will ask the more. I am come to send fire on the earth. And what will I if it be already kindled? But I have a baptism to be baptized with. And how am I straightened till it be accomplished? Suppose ye that I am come to give peace on earth? I tell you, nay. But rather division. For from henceforth, there shall be five and one house divided. Three against two and two against three. The father shall be divided against the son. And the son against the father. The mother against the daughter. And the daughter against the mother. The mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law. And the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And he said also to the people. When ye see a cloud rise out of the west. Straightway ye say, There cometh a shower, and so it is. And when ye see the south wind blow, ye say, There will be heat, and it cometh to pass. Ye hypocrites! Ye can discern the face of the sky and of the earth, but how is it that ye, that ye do not discern this time? Yea, and why even of yourselves judge ye not what is right? <laughs> There's that thing about judging again. Hmm. Right here, look at this. When thou goest with thine adversary to the magistrate, as thou art in the way, give diligence that thou mayest be delivered from him, lest he hail thee to the judge, and to judge deliver thee to the officer, and the officer cast thee into prison. I tell thee, thou shalt not depart hence till thou hast paid the very last might. And that is a debt that you cannot pay. See, you ought to know that something's up. But so many of you are blind, you choose not to see. You need proof. 
What more proof do you need? Oh, but you need to be bedazzled, right? With signs and wonders. Huh? <laughs> yeah, good luck with that. When thou goest with thine adversary, you who are lost, your adversary is the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Good luck. When thou goest with thine adversary to the magistrate, as thou art in the way, give diligence that thou mayest be delivered from him. Lest he hail thee to the judge, and the judge deliver thee to the officer, and the officer cast thee into prison. I tell thee, thou shalt not depart hence, till thou hast paid the very last mite. And again, that is a price that you can't pay. The Lord paid it for you. But see, you have to come to him on his terms. You, you've, been, you've been warned. So many out there of the church of the living God have given you truth, but all you do is lift up your head and snuff at it. Hmm. God's not fair, right? Hmm. Yeah. God's not fair, right? <laughs> Go to Job chapter 34. Job chapter 34. Job chapter 34 verses 10 on to verse 23. Therefore, hearken unto me, ye men of understanding. And what is understanding? To depart from evil. Far be it from God that he should do wickedness, and from the Almighty that he should commit iniquity. Yeah, God can't sin. For the work of a man shall he render unto him, and cause every man to find according to his ways. You reap what you sow. Yea, surely God will not do wickedly, neither will the Almighty pervert judgment, because God is a God of judgment. The Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, gave you a way out of hell. See, you got to be broken. You got to have sorrow. Most of you lost people, you're afraid of men. The fear of man bringeth a snare. Who hath given him charge? over the earth or who hath disposed the whole world if he set his heart upon man if he gather unto himself his spirit and his breath all flesh shall perish together and man shall turn again unto dust we came from dust not from a sniveling piece of snot that wiggled its way out of the water and then morphed into a monkey and then became man. Uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm saying this to you with charity. You're an idiot if you think evolution is a valid form of science falsely so called. It's a fairy tale. Okay? You're an idiot. Look up what an idiot means. Okay? All flesh shall perish together, and man shall turn again unto dust. If now thou hast understanding, hear this, hearken to the voice of my words. Shall even he that hateth right govern? And wilt thou condemn him that is most just? Look what's happening outside the door. That's happening right now, isn't it? Is it fit to say to a king, Thou art wicked, and to princes, ye are ungodly? How much less to him that accepteth not the persons of princes, nor regardeth the rich more than the poor? For they all are the work of his hands. In a moment shall they die. And the people shall be troubled at midnight and pass away. 
excuse me, and the mighty shall be taken away without hand. For his eyes are upon the ways of man, and he seeth all his goings. For there is no darkness nor shadow of death where the workers of iniquity may hide themselves. For he will not lay upon man more than right that he should enter into judgment with God. Hmm. There is no darkness nor shadow of death where the workers of iniquity may hide themselves. Worker of iniquity likes to remain hidden lest they come to the light lest their deeds should be reproved. Those that love darkness hate the light. <coughs> and the truth is nobody's going to get away with anything. You poor people. You foolish, foolish atheists. You, you fakes, you devils. You have all been warned. You have all been warned. And you're still thinking, oh, I still got time. What if it happened today? What if you were to die today? What if today, what if today, the Church of the Living God heard, come up hither. See, like I said, once we, the Church of the Living God, are caught up, this dispensation ends. And see, the conditioning that these devils are doing onto you people, just believe. You're going to fall like flies. <laughs> Second Peter, chapter 3. Second Peter, chapter 3. Verses 1 on to verse 11. This second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you, in both which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance, that ye may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets, and of the commandment of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior. Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers, walking after their own lusts. You're lost. That's you. And saying, <laughs> where is the promise of his coming? Where is the Lord God of Elijah? Where is your loving God? <laughs> wow. <laughs> Let's continue. For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. Have you ever run into a twit like this? Hmm? Have you ever run into someone like this outside the door and witnessing, talking to somebody like that? Oh! Oh! <laughs> For this... They willingly are ignorant of. They don't know, which is ignorant, not knowing better, and they don't want to know better. By the word of God, the heavens were of old, 
and the earth standing out of water and in the water. Okay, look at that verse. For this they willingly are ignorant of, that by the word of God, the scriptures, the heavens were of old. Meaning, this tells you who created the earth. When the earth was created. Roughly about what, 7,000 now or 6,000 years ago? Okay? But see, you, you lost people. <laughs> millions and billions and <laughs> in a galaxy far, far away. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And the earth standing out of the water and in the water, whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water perished. But the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. God's wrath is coming. It's called the time of Jacob's trouble. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, lives outside of what we perceive as time. Okay? Everything is open to him. He knows what's going to happen tomorrow. He knows what's going to happen in the next second. What do you know? Why not seek the one who made you, who died on that cross to cleanse you of your sin? But see, you have to get over yourself and come to him broken and contrite. And hence, that's the problem. Your pride. Pride. Verse 9. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness. His ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. But is long-suffering to us word, not willing that any, Mr. Calvinist, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to belief. <laughs> that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also, and the works that are therein, shall be burned up. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation, and godliness. Think yourself a saved man. Why aren't you out there warning people? Hmm? Why aren't you warning people of the coming catastrophe? Hmm? But no, no, you, you, you waste your time attacking people instead of going after the true enemy, Mystery Babylon, Roman Catholicism. Could it be because most of you are working for <laughs> Mystery Babylon? Yeah, look at that verse. 
Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? How, how often, brethren, do we take for granted the time that we have been given? You know, redeeming the time because the days are evil. How often do we, hello, hi, we're all guilty of this. How often do we take for granted the time that we have been given? You know, procrastination. <laughs> procrastination and, oh, I still got time. Once, once we're out of here, the world right now, to what you see, is nothing compared to when the church of the living God, the body of Christ, he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way, okay, the body of Christ, once the church of the living God is out of here, people, this world is going to become unrecognizable. Within a span of seven years, it's not going to take that long. No, you're, you're full of yourself, ain't you? So full of yourself, right? So full of yourself. You need proof. <laughs> yeah. Go to Romans chapter 2. Romans chapter 2, verses, also verses 1 on to verse 11. Therefore, thou art inexcusable, O man, whosoever thou art that judgest. For wherein thou judgest another, thou condemnest thyself. For thou that judgest doest the same things. Again, hypocritical judgment. Which, um, if you look over here in verses 17 uh, on to verse 24, uh, Paul talks about being a hypocrite in judgment. Okay? But, let's continue. You read that on your own time. But we are sure that the judgment of God is according to truth against them which commit such things. And thinkest thou this, O man, that judgeth them which do such things, and doest the same, that thou shalt escape the judgment of God? Look at verse uh, chapter 1, Romans chapter 1, verses 28 on to verse 32. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge... God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. Being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, Proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding. Understanding is to depart from evil. Covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. Misery loves company. Verse 4 in Romans chapter 2. Or despisest thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and long-suffering? 
not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance. You have today, if you have today, if you see this, I don't care who you are, you have today. What are you going to do with this day? I, I think rather the question you ought to ask, what is the Lord going to do this day? But after thy hardness and impenitent heart, not willing to kneel, treasurest up unto thyself wrath against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God, who will render to every man according to his deeds. Hardness of heart and not willing to bend, not willing to kneel before the Lord. Just go on in your sin, all the while claiming or thinking that you're a saved man or woman. <laughs> or, or thinking that there is no God. Yeah, atheist. Yeah, you believe in a God, atheist. The one that you look at in the mirror. Next time you run into an atheist, by the way, brethren, throw that at them. Oh, you don't, I don't believe there's a God. You're a liar. Bold-faced. Look, right, look them right in the eyes like you're a liar. And I can prove it. You can't prove it? Yes, I can. You do believe in a God. The one you look at in the mirror, throw that at them. <laughs> Watch how they react. They'll come up with the, I, well, I, 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 I don't, I, 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 me, 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 me. Fences. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's continue. To them who by patient continuance and well-doing seek for glory and honor and immortality eternal life. But unto them that are contentious and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation, and wrath. Tribulation and anguish upon every soul of man that doeth evil, of the Jew first, and also of the Gentile. But glory, honor, and peace to every man that worketh good, to the Jew first, and also to the Gentile. For there is no respect of persons with God. Okay? This is what you're to live your life by. The authorized version of the scriptures. Okay, not your feelings. Okay, not a creed given to you from the Roman Catholic Church. Ugh. No. You are to align your life with the scriptures. You want to learn how to live? Here you go. Okay? See, when you are truly saved and born again, you are sealed, you're going to heaven, eternally secure. Once saved, always saved, okay? But if you think that absolves you from being obedient onto the scriptures, you're, you're terribly mistaken. Yes, you're going to go to heaven when you, when you die. If you are truly saved, born again, converted. Come to the Lord on his terms, broken and contrite. Okay, and in the fear of the Lord, that brokenness and contrition, you're going to call upon his name. Because you're going to realize what a wretched, worthless, miserable, piece of garbage sinner you are. And that you can't save yourself. The lesser crying out to the greater. But see, a lot of you are too, too good for that, ain't you? You're going to do it yourself by just believing. <laughs> the devils also believe and tremble. But if you think that we're not to be obedient unto the scriptures, just live as the world, again, 
I don't know about you. I don't want to have the Lord ashamed of me. Do you? And if you say you're okay with that, uh, you, you need to do some serious self-examination. You really do. You really do. The problem. What is the biggest problem with you lost people, you devils? What, what, you you want to know what your problem is? Here, let's, let me show you what your problem is. Proverbs chapter 6. Verse 16 on to verse 19. Proverbs 6, verses 16 on to verse 19. These six things doth the Lord hate. Yea, seven are an abomination unto him. A proud look. Starts with pride. Hmm. If you if you have ever encountered, and many of you of the Church of the Living God have encountered some of these atheist people. Hmm. Wow. Talk about a proud look. Well, what about these Christians who think they are saved? You know, go to the church buildings and any Bible will do. Dress like the world, look like the world, huh? Yeah. A proud look. A lying tongue. A lying tongue. Um, repentance is going from unbelief to belief. Your life doesn't change. It doesn't need, uh, a changed life isn't going to happen. Okay? It's not a requirement. You can go on living like the world. You believe, you're saved, don't worry about it. That's a work, right? Hmm. Hands that shed, and hands that shed innocent blood. An heart that deviseth wicked imaginations. Feet that be swift to running to mischief. A false witness that speaketh lies. And he that soweth discord among brethren. It starts with a proud look, but all of these have one tie-in. It begins with a proud look, pride. You will be like the Most High, right? To live in pride is to live after the God of this world, the little G, God of this world. Lucifer, Satan. See, your self-righteousness needs to be destroyed. Because if you go to the Lord in self-righteousness, pride, oh, I'm going to just believe and you're obligated to save me because I just believe. Think about this. Think about what, think about that, okay? I'm just going to believe, just believe. And that means God is obligated to save me because I just believe, according to what a lot of these evil people tell you. Um, th that sounds kind of proud, prideful to me. How about you? How about you? Hmm? And then, <laughs> and then here, go to uh, Micah 
chapter 6. Micah chapter 6. Uh, verses 6. On to verse 16. Close out that chapter. Wherewith shall I come before the Lord? And how and bow myself before the high God? Excuse me. Wherewith shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before the high God? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves of a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams or with ten thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? Now hold up. Look at that. Shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before the high God? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves of a year old, Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams or with ten thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body, for the sin of my soul? I, 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 me, me, me. Oh, but it sounds so humble in a way, doesn't it? What, what must I give you? What must I, 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 me, me, me? Sounds really humble, doesn't it? All those personal pronouns. <laughs> I love, you gotta love verse 8. He hath shewed thee, O man, what is good. There's none good. No, not one. Uh, what did he say? Why callest thou me good? There is none good but God. And who is God? Oh. <gasps> Who is God? The Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, He is God, of course. But who is God? Hmm? Is it yourself? Hmm. He has shewed thee, O man, what is good. And what doth the Lord require of thee? But to do justly, and to love mercy, and to walk humbly, humbly, with, with thy God. The Lord's voice crieth unto the city, and the man of wisdom, what is wisdom? The fear of the Lord, that is wisdom, shall see thy name. Hear ye the rod, and who hath appointed it? Are there yet the treasures of wickedness in the house of the wicked, and the scant measure that is abominable? Shall I count them pure with the wicked balances, and with the bag of deceitful weights? Shall I count you righteous because of what you think, what you do, you think is right? Huh? Look at that. Shall I count them pure with the wicked balances? Look at me, look at me. Have I not cast out devils in your name and in your name done marvelous, wonderful good works? Because I thought they were good? For the rich men thereof are full of violence. And the inhabitants thereof have spoken lies, and their tongue is deceitful in their mouth. Therefore also will I make thee sick in smiting thee. Yeah. In making thee desolate because of thy sins. Yeah, God is a God who judges sin. Yeah. And you're not getting away from that. Thou shalt eat, but not be satisfied. 
How often do you eat the things of this world, lost man, woman? Hmm? How often do you indulge yourself in the things of this world? Are you satisfied? Oh, sure, I'm saying you lie. You lie. You lie. Because you always want more, don't you? Enough just isn't enough, is it? You always want more. And thy casting down shall be in the midst of thee. And thou shalt take hold, but shall not deliver. And that which thou deliverest will I give up to the sword. Picture of someone trying to save themselves by what they do. Very, very good picture. Wouldn't you agree? Thou shalt sow, but thou shalt not reap. Thou shalt tread the olives, but thou shalt not anoint thee with oil. And sweet wine, but shalt not drink wine. For the statutes of Omri are kept, and all the works of the house of Ahab, and ye walk in their counsels. Uh, Omri and Ahab, by the way, are some of the more wicked kings that have ever been in Israel. For the statutes of Omri are kept, and all the works of the house of Ahab, and ye walk in their counsels, that I should make thee a desolation. That I should make thee a desolation. Why is that? Because God is a God of judgment. And the inhabitants thereof and hissing. Therefore ye shall bear the reproach of my people. You're going to reap what you sow. Either fruit unto life, everlasting life, with our Lord Jesus Christ in heaven. Or get your flippers on to swim in the lake of fire. Oh, but you still got time, don't you, huh? <laughs> Go to Psalm 34. Psalm 34. Psalm 34. Verses 11 on to verse 22. Close out the chapter. Come, ye children, hearken unto me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. What man is he that desireth life, and loveth many days, that he may see good? Keep thy tongue from evil, and thy lips from speaking guile. Depart from evil, and do good. Seek peace, and pursue it. Seek peace. Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, is referred to also as the Prince of Peace. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and his ears are open unto their cry. The face of the Lord is against them that do evil, to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry, and the Lord heareth, and delivereth them out of all their troubles. <clears throat> The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart, and saveth such as be of a contrite, sorrowful spirit. That, that, that does not change. Okay? That has not changed today. Okay? Brokenness and contrition. What does the Lord require of you? Brokenness and contrition. You need to be broken before you can be fixed. And let me tell you something. When the Lord breaks you of your pride, thinking that you're a good person and that you can save yourself, we kind of looked at that in Micah, about these people who do all these things according to their own imagination. Works, you know, what they do. <laughs> Trying to save themselves. Yeah, yeah. No, brokenness and contrition. Now, 
Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. He keepeth all his bones, not one of them is broken. Evil shall slay the wicked. Sooner or later it's going to catch up to you. And they that hate the righteous shall be desolate. <laughs> what, else can we, what else can be said? The Lord redeemeth the soul of his servants, and none of them that trust in him shall be desolate. Go to James chapter 4. James chapter 4. <clears throat> Excuse me. Remember, James is specifically for the Jewish people during the time of Jacob's trouble. But as you have already figured out, this video is for our instruction in righteousness. You can't, we can't get enough of it. Can't. Just can't get enough. James chapter 4, verses 1 and verse 10. From whence come wars and fightings among you? Come they not hence, even of your lusts that war in your members? Ye lust and have not. Ye kill and desire to have, and cannot obtain. Ye fight in war, yet ye have not, because ye ask not. Ye ask, and receive not, because ye ask amiss, that ye may consume it upon your lusts. Brothers, uh, sisters, when was the last time you asked the Lord for something that it may be used to give unto others. When was the last time you prayed like that? Hmm? Do you even pray like that? Get 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 your mind away from the tangible, okay? Get your mind away from that. When was the last time you've asked the Lord, Lord, <laughs> teach me thy word that maybe one day, Lord, uh, a brother or sister come along or something that you may use this vessel for your glory to comfort others, to edify others. That you may be glorified. You pray like that? Do you ask of the Lord things to consume it on your own lust? It is truly a humbling thing and um, a joyous thing when you esteem others better than yourself. How, how many of you do that? And if you do that, are you taking heed to yourself? Meaning that you don't get wrapped up in pride because of it? This is kind of delicate. But see, the Lord within you, he'll guide you aright. Ye adulterers, we're going to see the answer to all of that. Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. <laughs> Do ye think that the scripture saith in vain, the spirit that dwelleth in us lusty, lusteth to envy? Yeah, the spirit of man lusteth to envy. Look at, look at Cain and Abel. But he giveth more grace, wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. Submit yourselves therefore to God. 
Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. You can't resist the devil unless you first submit yourself, therefore, to God. You can't. You cannot resist the devil without first submitting yourself to God. But see, how many of you are your own God? And see, that takes brokenness, submission. It takes brokenness, it takes contrition, fear. Without brokenness and contrition, coming to our Lord Jesus Christ, but you come in vanity, in your pride, you're not saved. Brokenness and contrition is a requirement for you to come unto the Lord that he may save you. And when someone tells you that you don't, you can skip over that and just believe they're jumping over, skipping over something that is very important. Something that is needed. And hence again, once we, the Church of the Living God, are caught up and you're left behind because you have your belief. These same people are the ones who are going to cause you because they have, you're deceived, okay? You have not received the love of the truth, therefore you're going to believe a lie. You're going to take that mark. And then everything is lost for you. These are the times we live in, brethren. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Ye cannot love God and mammon, mammon, money, things of the world. What, what, what does it say? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God, verse 4. Now you got to remember something about the book of James here, okay? Like I said, this book is specifically written for the Jewish people during the time of Jacob's trouble. So the implication there is a little bit more severe for that time period, okay? Because those of the world during the time of Jacob's trouble, you won't be able to buy or sell save they that have the mark in their right hand or in their forehead, okay? But, for today, you, you're a friend of this world. I mean, Paul echoes this, you know. And be not conformed to this world, but be renewed by the transforming of your mind. Okay? Okay, that's a, that's a theme throughout all scripture. You know, we're to be holy, separate. Okay? And there are those of you out there who can be separate, but you ain't saved. And that's vanity different. You're so afraid, aren't you? Afraid of being debased, of being humbled. Of accepting that truth that you ain't good. And there ain't nothing you can do about it, boy. There ain't nothing you can do about it. You know what you can do? The only thing you can do is cry out to the Lord for mercy. And see, <laughs> if, you, <laughs> if you don't have that brokenness or contrition, Be afflicted and mourn and weep. 
Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to heaviness. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he shall lift you up. Humble yourself. Because the time is coming when the Lord's going to do it for you. And by that time, it's going to be so, so very late for you. Go to Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12. Remember how we just looked about if you're a friend of the world, you're an enemy of God. Well, Romans chapter 12, uh, verses 1 and 2. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Go now to verses 9. 9 unto the close of the chapter. Be kindly affect. Oh, excuse me. Verse 9 unto the close of the chapter. Let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil. Abhor is extreme hatred. Okay? Abhor that which is evil. Sin. Roman Catholicism. The Jesuits. Yes, they are evil. Abhor that which is evil. to that which is good there is none good but one that is God and God speaks to you through this the scriptures okay here's your link to him okay you have the Lord living within you if you are saved born again converted of the church of the living God but here's your physical link to him and he'll use this Be kindly affection one to another with brotherly love, in honor preferring one another. I'd rather be with my uh, brothers and sisters. Not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, serving the Lord. Oh, did I skip something? Yes. Uh, excuse me for that. Verse 11, not slothful in business, fervent in, servant, uh, in, uh, fervent in spirit, beg your pardon, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing instant in, par in prayer, beg your pardon for that, <laughs> rejoicing in hope, and serving the Lord. You're serving the Lord, you are rejoicing in hope. Because your labor is not in vain in the Lord. We have hope. You are lost, what do you have to hope for? Distributing to the necessity of saints. Given to hospitality. Bless them which persecute you. Bless and curse not. Speaking truth to them. Blessing those who persecute you. Speaking the truth of God's word unto them. Living according to the scriptures. That by the way you adhere your life unto the scriptures. You're a witness unto them. Rejoice with them that do rejoice. And weep with them that weep. Be of the same mind one toward another. Mind not high things. But condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceits. Recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. If it be possible, as much as lieth in you. Live peaceably with all men. Dearly beloved, 
avenge not yourselves but rather give place to uh, unto wrath for it is written vengeance is mine i will repay saith the lord it ain't up to you to get even it ain't up to you to get even Someone steps on your, your toes or insults you. You want to get even. It ain't up to you to get even. Because if you do that, what are, you, what are you doing? You're conforming to the world. Vengeance is whose? Vengeance is mine. I will repay. Seth the Lord. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. And, verse 9, Let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil. Extreme hatred. Cleave to that which is good. That's not ourselves. Second Timothy. Second Timothy chapter two. Verse fifteen. On to verse twenty six. Study to shew thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Rightly dividing the word of truth. This scriptures, the authorized version of the scriptures, this book is for you. Yes, it is. It ain't all written to you. This is a Jewish book. Okay? The, the scriptures are for you. But it's not written all to you. There are divisions, ages, dispensations. And salvation is different within those dispensations. That's why it's so imperative for you. That today, if the Lord will, and he will, that you be broken and contrite. And come to him as a broken, contrite sinner in great fear and cry out to him for his mercy. And may he save you. But see, we're told to study. The Bibles don't tell you to study. They tell you to work, do good, that kind of thing. Study is what? To shew thyself approved unto God. You, you're, to, you're to study what? The scriptures. But shun profane and vain ba -ba 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 babblings. For they will increase unto more ungodliness. Yeah. Yeah. And their word will eat as doth a canker, of whom is Hymenius and Philetus, whom concerning the truth have erred, or erred, excuse me, saying that the resurrection is past already, and overthrow the faith of some. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, and no other foundation can any man lay than that which is laid. And that foundation is who? Jesus Christ. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal. Because those who are saved, born again, converted, are sealed until the day of redemption, eternally secure. The Lord knoweth them that are his. And let everyone that nameth the name of Christ 
depart from iniquity. Don't be like the world. Depart from iniquity. But in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, and of earth, and some to honor and some to dishonor. Honor and dishonor, gold and silver, dishonor, wood and, and of earth. If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor. Purge himself of what? Things of the earth. The natural things, wood and of earth, um, aren't we not of dust? From dust we came, unto dust we will return. And doth not the devil, <laughs> uh, that serpent, crawling, uh, slithering around on his belly, eating dust all the days of his life? If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified and meet for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. Flee also youthful lusts, but follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace, with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. And what is a pure heart? A broken heart. The blueness of a wound cleanseth away evil, and so do stripes, the inward parts of the belly. Okay? But foolish and unlearned questions avoid knowing that they do gender strifes. And the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patient. Now, now let's hold, hold on. Okay? Look at verse 20, where it says, And some to honor and some to dishonor. Okay? If a man, verse 21, If a man therefore purge himself from these, purge himself from what? The things of the world. Okay? He shall be a vessel unto honor, likened unto gold and silver, sanctified, and meet for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. Okay? Hold your place here. Okay? Once the Lord saves you, okay? Once the Lord saves you, okay? Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. Uh, let's read verses 8 through 10, of course. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, and the works he's talking about are the works of the law, okay? Lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, not to stay saved, Okay? You're not, he's not, he doesn't call you and then just has you to sit there idle. Okay? Which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Go back to 2 Timothy chapter 2. Okay? So, purge yourself from the things of the world. Sanctification. Your life is going to change. The Lord is going to say, don't do this, don't do that, don't do this. Okay? But remember, He's not forcing you at gunpoint. You have to make these decisions. Okay? It's not Calvinism where choice is taken out of the way. <laughs> okay? You have to choose. Okay? You're not being led by gunpoint. Okay? Okay? But he's going to change your life. If a man therefore purge himself from these, and, if, and think about this, wood gets burnt up and earth what happens when you heat up earth? It gets hard. You know, clay, like clay made of the potter, gets hardened. 
and it can be broken. Uh, yeah. Sanctified and meet for the master's use and prepared unto every good work. Okay? Dishonor. 21, honor. Verse 22, dishonor. Flee also youthful lusts. Youthful lusts. Dishonor. Okay? When you were a child, you thought as a child. You spake as a child. But when you became a man, you put away childish things. Okay? Think of it this way. The Lord saves you. You put away the things of the world. Childish things. And become a man. And you pick up the sword of the Spirit. Okay? But, follow righteousness, honor, faith, charity, peace, with them, preferring one another, that call on the Lord out of a pure heart, one that has been broken and contrite, and that has come to the Lord in fear. And out of that, beg, plead, call out for his mercy. But foolish and unlearned questions avoid. Foolish and unlearned. Dishonor. Knowing that they do gender strifes. And the servant of the Lord must not strive. But be gentle unto all men. Apt to teach. Patient. In meekness. Instructing those that oppose themselves. A proud look. Okay? You want proof? Where is the Lord God of Elijah? You're opposing yourself. You are your worst own enemy. Okay? In meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. If God peradventure will give them repentance... To the acknowledging of the truth. And that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil. Who are taken captive by him at his will. And you also got to remember too brethren. In 2 Timothy chapter 3 verses 10 on to verse 17. Okay. We have to remember this. But thou hast fully known my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, charity, and patience. Persecutions, afflictions, which came unto me at Antioch, at Iconium, at Lystra, what persecutions I endured, but out of them all the Lord delivered me. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Verse 21. If a man therefore, in uh, chapter 2, if a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified, and meet for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. Okay? Looking at verse 20 again. But in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, and some to honor and some to dishonor. And it says here in verse uh, chapter 3, verse 12, Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Think about it this way. What if... Okay, you're, you're saved of the church of the living God and you have given yourself over to that? What if the Lord's keeping you alive to make an example out of you? What if he's keeping you alive that those who are also of the church of the living God when he finally does bring the hammer on your head and they see your downfall, that they may fear. And 
walk according to the standard. Verse 13 in chapter 3. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. And the Spirit of truth, he will guide you into all truth. And the Lord Jesus Christ, what did he do for the apostles? He opened their understanding that they may understand the scriptures. He expounded to them the scriptures. Continue thou in the things which thou hast learned of, learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. Is the Lord teaching you? And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. God breathed. And is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect in heart, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. And we are his ambassadors, ministers of reconciliation, with the word of reconciliation. You know, you know, brethren, it's it's very easy for some of us to just give up, and it's like, okay, I, I, I'm. I'm done with this. I'm just going to, you know, it's very easy. But you know, while you, you, you're still here, the Lord has not called you, saved you, so you can just sit there. You have something to give. And, and, and to get out of your mind this. Okay, think a little, think a little bit more deeper than that. Okay, you know. Again, what if you die today? Hmm? What if you die today? What if today the we hear come up hither? What if that happened? What are you going to be found doing? Like I said, it's, it's really easy for us to be a little bitter, isn't it? But you got to be careful about that. Yes, one of the things, too, you got to also be careful is, is um, being too kind, in a way, I guess you could say. Which has backfired on me quite often. But um, see, if you get too hard, you can miss an opportunity that the Lord has given. And brethren, because you get so defensive, so on your guard, and amen. But if you get too defensive and too on your guard, what happens when the Lord is the one that orchestrates a circumstance? And he wants to use you. And you blow it because you're being too defensive. And the Lord lets you know about it. <laughs> He has with me, Brad. 
I wanted you to speak to that man. But you blew it. So I'm going to give it to someone else. Will. But that was something that I orchestrated. And you blew it. That is something, brethren, that um, if you ever experience that, you don't forget that kind of thing. You really don't. That's one of those things that uh, could be a thorn in your flesh in a way to remind you, to buffet you. It's like, hey, <laughs> you know, remember what happened the last time? Be, got, be on your guard about that. That is why, you know, we are to study, to show ourselves approved on the God. You know, we are to live according to the scriptures, see? Anyway, um, yeah, that, that's going to be it for this video. That's going to be it for this video. I'm going to put some links in the description box. Warning about uh, Catholicism. Uh, yeah, uh, the Charismatics, you know, about signs and wonders and that kind of stuff. Um, and also uh, putting in the description what the answer is. Time is so short. Time is so short, brethren. Anyway, that's going to be it for this video. Um, I've got a, got a very, very big video coming here sometime in maybe a week or two. It's slowly matriculating together. <laughs> um, uh, it's going to be actually a pretty big video. Um, that is coming. But um, don't forget to pray for one another. Don't forget to pray for one another. And thank you to all of you who pray for us. Please keep us in your prayers still. You know, um, if it is the Lord's will that he get us out of this overpriced uh, glorified motel room to a house that is cheaper, um, his will be done. But uh, please pray for us. As we pray for you, thank you, and hopefully the Lord be glorified, magnified through this. Thank you so much for watching if you do. We love you. We'll see you in the next video, okay?